Hikers of Reddit, what's the weirdest slash scariest thing you've found slash seen during a hike? Mountain lion came very close to me. It didn't seem aggressive but it was curious. After a few minutes of us staring at each other and me pissing my pants he finally lost interest and disappeared into the forest while I got the fuck out of there. I could vaguely hear some kind of instrument being played. The closer I got, I could make out it was a saxophone. This dude was walking the trail through the woods while playing a fucking sax. I passed him and he said beautiful day for music, thought I wandered into a Twin Peaks episode. Sax Squatch? My wife and I were on our honeymoon. We were on an island in Thailand, and about two hours into a jungle hike. In the middle of nowhere, we hear a bloody curdling screams out of desperation. My first thoughts were someone had fallen and broken their leg or something and we need to help them. Eventually, we get to this person who was I hysterics after being lost in this jungle for almost a full day. It turned out he lives less than a mile from us back in the UK and works for my best friend. I've seen mountain lions, I've seen bears. The scariest thing I've seen was an elaborate grow operation in Northern California. I crested a hill and walked 20 yards into this valley when I realized there were irrigated pot plants for as far as the eye could see. Reservoirs, hoses, camouflaged netting. My friend and I noped out of there as fast we could, both expecting to be shot on our way back to our car. What's more impressive when it's done naked? Beekeeping. Especially when the bees notice your flower. Welding. Training an attack dog, you just need peanut butter. Magic tricks. I'd love to see the disappearing pencil trick. Taking your phone out of your pocket. The old ham wallet. The old spam purse. The old taco saco. The old brown bag. Frying bacon. Stripping. Casually takes off skin. Skydiving. Flap 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 flap. What is something most people think only men do, but actually women do as well? Keep hand in pants in a non-sexual way when just chilling. Shit. Inconceivable. Get horny over nothing or randomly. At least you have no visible sign for that. Be dirty and lazy. The weird sidestep. Sometimes when I wear really short shorts, my butt cheeks start eating my shorts and I have to try my best to make a discreet weird side step to adjust it. Check out women. Even straight women check out women. Source, am a straight woman. I think. Use Reddit lol. I just said this on another thread but, having fantasies about saving people or sacrificing yourself for them. Be abusive. Yeah, especially emotional abuse. Stay away from anyone who is emotionally manipulative. Play video games. Shave their face. If the men find out we can shapeshift, they're going to tell the church. What is clearly a myth but is deep rooted in our society. That you need to wait 24 hours to report a missing person. If you sincerely think someone is missing, then report it. The faster that a missing person report is filed, the better chance there is that the person will be found. This is especially crucial when it comes to missing children. The belief that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Actually it does, and sometimes with great frequency. The Middle Ages were less barbaric and dark than we think. Leaning your head back for a bloody nose. MSG is harmful and East Asian cuisine is bad because of MSG. Gum stays in your stomach for 7 years. The amount of myths, clever marketing and bro science in the health and nutrition world is honestly too much to even list here. Anyone says you can trim fat in X area by doing Y exercises. Totally impossible. You lose fat proportionally over all areas of your body, you can't just target one area to work on. That OCD is liking things to be extremely neat, tidy or organized. Psychologists, therapists, counselors etc. What are some things people tend to think are normal but should really be checked out? Inability to regulate your own emotions. Also negative self-talk. We talk to ourselves way worse than any person could. I'm curious how much procrastinating and or lack of motivation to do stuff is normal, and how much isn't. Thinking that 5 hours of sleep per night is okay. Rapid weight gain or loss with no obvious medical cause. Relationship problems, don't get me fucking started. Research psychologist checking in, if your toddler is doing socially unusual behaviors such as, not responding to name. Not responding to a social smile. Not pointing slash using gestures. Using your hands slash arms as if they were a tool or extension of their body. Engaging in repetitive behaviors. Not responding to your use of gaze to direct their attention to distal objects. Check with a pediatrician about getting assessed for autism spectrum disorder. P. 
people normalize abusive behaviors by loved ones all the time. Being able to identify your own personal boundaries and then enforce them with others for your own well-being is, unfortunately, not innate. Therapist here. If you grew up with or currently are a part of a family where the whole family has to work to keep one or more members of the family in a good mood or appeased, that's not healthy. People are in charge of their own feelings. It is not your job to appease others so that they can emotionally regulate themselves. What glamorized career path is actually a complete nightmare? My significant other is an attorney and isn't loving life right now. She says you know how you did term papers in college? Well I do term papers every day, all day, endlessly. Chef. Long hours, shitty environment, nothing is ever good enough. Flight attendant. The travel would be amazing, but let's face it. You're a glorified waitress working in a cramped, aluminum tube. Veterinarian. Insanely competitive schooling that crippled you with debt, with a depressing debt income ratio after graduation. Most of your patients don't like you, and most of the owners think you're getting rich up selling them unnecessary services when their dogs' is exploding eyeball cancer can be cured with raw organic exotic meats slash CD slash coconut oil, but you're withholding that information because you're in bed with big kibble. High stress, stagnant wages, long hours, shit holiday leave, rampant depression. Lost count of how many colleagues have committed suicide. Sometimes tempted to join them. Modeling, too competitive and not enough food. Most career paths, glamorized or not, can be a nightmare if you have a shitlord for a boss. I've started working in television from a too young an age. It was amazing to witness all the behind the scenes stuff, but the reality is that these days you just can't make enough money from performing on TV. Let alone the deprivation of creative freedom, which is what got my show cancelled I think. Deep Sea Divers, What Are Your Horror Stories? Diving the day before a hurricane on a small South Pacific island. Out of nowhere a black and white sea snake, venomous, wrapped itself around my arm. Apparently this happens from time to time before major storms they can sense it and look for things that are heading towards the shore so that they don't have to put in so much effort to get out of the sea. As soon as I was in the shallows it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. I thought I was going to get bitten to death by a snake at sea. Turns out I was just a taxi for a very calm but rather rushed reptile. The only scare I've had is some jackass in a yacht cruising through our dive location at full throttle. You could hear the boat coming for a solid minute or two before it flew over our heads. Our boat had a dive flag on it and we had a buoy with a dive flag on it. They didn't even slow down. Barracuda, sharks, rays, manatees, dolphins. All cool. Humans are way scarier. Night diving is incredibly creepy. You don't realize how dark the ocean is until you are in it. The Biford Dolphin Diving Bell Accident Long story short, some divers came up from an extremely deep dive at an oil drilling rig, and someone fucked up the decompression procedure and opened the door while the chamber was still pressurized at depth. The four divers were instantly killed, and the one nearest the door literally exploded and they found bits of his body all over the oil rig. So, next time someone tells you that people don't explode in decompression chambers like you see in the movies, Tell them they're wrong. What's something you have zero interest in? Raid Shadow Legends. Commercial advertisements interrupting what I'm doing. Literally whatever my neighbor wants to talk about, every day. Celebs that are famous just because they are famous, they never painted anything, never sing any hit songs, never competed in anything, every country got them. Celebrity slash influencer culture. Working the rest of my life. NFTs, crypto. The Kardashians. In the baffled depths of the ocean, live creatures that have never seen the sky. And yet these poor light-deprived critters, care more about Kardashians than I. Pictures of people's babies. Gender reveal parties. We're gonna find out soon enough. Fucking Harley Davidson's and all the logo apparel that goes with. I just can't. Thanks for asking. I'm happy to have that out. What isn't torture but feels like it is? Faking interest in a conversation you want no part of. Slow internet. Slow internet is worse than no internet at all. When you prepare for a sneeze but it won't come out. Having to sit through an interminably long PowerPoint presentation when the presenter is literally just reading off the slides. Email it to me if that's all you're going to do because I can read off slides too. Then seeing there's still like 22 slides to go. Having to listen to all I want for Christmas is you every two songs as an employee on a mall. The dentist drill. Listening to someone else's terrible music. Anxiety. Job interview. 
what extinct creature would be an absolute nightmare for humans if it still existed? I feel like pterodactyls would be a nuisance. Any other hominin species, Neanderthal, Denisovan etc. It would be such a moral pain in the ass. Can we put them in zoos? Do they get nature preserves? Do we give them human rights? How would we share land and resources? Would we go to war? I feel like the world is only big enough for one of us, and it might not be big enough for just us either. Sarcosuchus Imperator was a crocodile who measured over 40 feet long and is estimated to have had one of the greatest bite forces in history. Something that could go in and out of the ocean like that and just gobble up a family walking by the beach, not even right next to the water, is terrifying. They were thought to have scavenged out of the water. No matter what the answers are, some people would try to eat it and others would try to fuck it. Unless I had full head-to-toe plate armor and an automatic shotgun with a drum, I don't like my chances against a host seagull out in the open. It was a 30-pound bird of prey that hunted Moa in New Zealand. Imagine 30 pounds dive bombing you out of the blue with 2-inch talons and a 4-inch claw on each foot. It went extinct only like 400 years ago because the first humans to inhabit the area hunted the Moa go extinction almost immediately and starved out the eagles. Not just Moa, they found some nests with human children's remains if I remember correctly. Brachiosaurus. They are not predators but they apparently pooped and farted so much that it would scare away predators. Imagine getting farted on and then just dying. I don't remember that part in Jurassic Park. Any kind of giant bug, especially giant spiders. A significant portion of the human population would off themselves rather than deal with giant spiders. I know it, you know it. Giant fucking bugs could you imagine a bird-sized mosquito taking a pint from you? What's the most inappropriate thing you've witnessed at a funeral? My own kids. Boys ages 10 and 8. At their great-grandfather's wake, they got a chair and moved it to the casket and started making his mouth into smiley face. Laughing the whole time. When me and their grandfather, my father-in-law, saw it, I immediately pulled them away and told them they shouldn't do that. Grandpa laughed and said it's fine, he would have really loved that they did that. We later found out that the great-grandfather had asked the funeral home ahead of time to put a sign in his hand that said thanks for coming but they refused. At my grandpa's funeral in 2006 a random drunk woman that no one in our family knew stumbled in and started singing show tunes, then crying till she was escorted out. An estranged uncle driving past my grandmother's funeral playing another one bites the dust. My step-grandmother died a few months before the Borat movie came out, so everyone was in full-blown Borat mode. Someone's phone went off and their ringtone was throw the Jew down the well. She, as well as most of the people attending the funeral, were all Jewish. At my cousin's funeral, one of my relatives literally tried jumping in the casket with him. Really traumatizing experience I might add. They're just the funeral booster. Paid him a thousand dollars for that. Every funeral needs a hype man. At my grandma's funeral, there was a woman that had a really bad relationship with my grandma, but one of my aunts invited her to the funeral. She started receiving people as if she was a family member and tried to put herself at the center of everything. At a family friend's funeral, a man I allegedly met when I was three came up behind me, pulled my head back by placing his hand on my neck, and told me that I might not remember him now but I will someday. That creepy old dick fart. What's something horrible you've witnessed as a child but did not completely understand, only to discover later in life how horrible it really was? Walking 20 minutes to school only to pass the liquor store parking lot where you see your dad passed out in the parking lot. I saw a man put something in a woman's drink at a restaurant. She had gone to the bathroom and he put some powder in her drink. Back then, I didn't know what roofies were, so I thought maybe it was just medicine or something. It sickens me when I think about it now. Balkan War. Very blessed I was too young back then. Never really questioned the bodies on the side of the roads because I had the feeling that it was something I don't want to know until I'm older. Some older kids who survived still have issues to this day, but I was fine because I realized the abnormally. Found my grandmother naked unconscious and the tub tub was empty. It did not scare me or anything I just got mom. Had a guy swim towards me in a pool when I was five and pick me up while groping me, I enjoyed being thrown and didn't notice. He looked like Nedry from Jurassic Park. My mother screamed at him and the lifeguards pulled him out of the pool and detained him, he was known. I was a part of a robbery at a bank when I was six years old. My mom took me and my sister there to make her deposit and this guy came in with a gun and threatened to shoot me in the face if he didn't get the money quick. Didn't even know it was real until my mom told me a few years ago. People of Reddit who work in a casino, what's some of the saddest moments you witnessed? I worked at a casino as a dealer through college. 
A lot of incidents were pretty sad, especially with regulars that you liked. One regular would tell me about his middle school age kids, and then I would realize the next week or so later that he was missing their school plays slash recitals etc because he was at the tables. I remember working an overnight one Christmas Eve and begging him to go home when 6 slash 7 am rolled around because his kids would be up and opening presents. Other times just people screaming at you for stealing their mortgage payments from them that month. Then seeing them back again the next day. During my 8 hour shift a gentleman won $15,000 on a slot machine. Punched out at end of shift and had the next two days off. Returned to work after my weekend to find the man still sitting at the same slot machine. He had been there for two plus days losing $15,000. We used to have a woman who would be on the blackjack tables for five days slash nights straight. Her husband would call and tell her that her kids wanted her home. Her boss actually came to the casino to try and get her to leave, she was missing work. I don't know what happened to her but she's probably ruined her life. We also had a few regulars commit suicide and a few go to jail. Former Valletta Casino. The amount of daily regulars who drove barely functioning vehicles full of trash, roaches, and rats who would actually valet their car and go gamble away any money they had to their name was honestly depressing. The saddest I remember was a 90 plus year old lady who drove a 91 Corolla and when we got in her car we realized she had no power steering fluid at all and her steering wheel would barely turn. I have no earthly idea how her frail arms could turn it. We went and bought her some before she left that evening. My mom works as a dealer at a casino and has told me multiple stories of grown men wearing adult diapers at the table so they don't have to leave to use the restroom. What is something that you find incredibly cringe, but you think other people wouldn't? The judges crying on those talent shows on TV. The most simple and relatable answer, listening to a recording of your voice. America's got talent. All they do is fucking praise the singers and hate on the others. Selfies in public, I love that people can do it but I can't I cringe I feel bothersome. Filming yourself doing acts of kindness. If someone is going to do something nice for me, and they film me and post that shit online I'll be pissed. People singing at me. I have no idea what to do and feel cringe the entire time. Some people love just having people sing to them though. Large public proposals. Have thoughts about the things you did years ago at 3 in the morning? What, kind, gesture actually annoys you? Waving me on at a stop sign when they clearly have the right of way. Not telling me something to protect me. Drives me crazy. Holding the door for me but from the inside of the door frame so I have to like. Scoot by them but to crotch style. Fucking up the flow at an intersection by not taking your turn, and flagging others through. If you don't merge in zipper fashion, you're dead to us all. Letting three cars in to be polite completely disrupts the flow. When store associates come up to me point two seconds after I've walked into the store asking if I'm finding everything okay. Breaking the order of how things should move in order to give someone the ability to go first. Now you are just confusing people and wasting time. When people try to be helpful by grabbing heavy items I'm carrying out of my arms without asking me first. I appreciate the sentiment, but it throws off the balance of all the other heavy objects in my arms. What is something that sounds safe but actually isn't? Dryer land. Clear your dryer vents, people. Going in a car without a headrest on your seat. It's not just a pillow for comfort. Four wheelers. So many injuries and deaths from people who don't respect what they can do and just how easy they are to topple. Grain silos. People die every year because they explode with static electricity. Walking up or down stairs. From my friend who works in government studying accidents. Duck boats. Hmm. Using a dull knife rather than a sharp one? Mouthing off to a stranger. You never know how crazy they might be, or if they have a weapon. Just bide your tongue. Safes. They will bloody well crunch your fingers if you're not careful. Cleaning a cat's litter box with bleach. Don't mix ammonia and bleach. You'll be committing a war crime. What's an urge you get but will never act upon? Every time I stand over the bins of apples in a grocery store I wonder how many people I could hit with a decent throwing arm before somebody stopped me. To just vanish. To just withdraw all my money, get in my car and drive until I don't feel like driving anymore. It would like hitting reset on my life. Teacher here. Sometimes, whenever I have students act out of line, I get the urge to seduce their mothers and randomly show up at Saturday breakfast. What a power play that would be. To move far away from where I currently live never telling a soul where I'm going, and starting completely fresh in life. Anyone else get the weird urge to kiss whoever you're talking to?
regardless of their gender or attractiveness, almost like AI could kiss you, what would occur as a result of that, I wonder urge. It's really off-putting at times. I hope it's not just me. When I'm driving, I often get the urge to just swerve into oncoming traffic. Haven't a clue why. What's the craziest crime you or somebody in your family has committed? My friend got blackout drunk and stole a bulldozer that had the keys left in it. He turned it on and obviously didn't know how to drive it so he just ended up making the scoopy part go up and down for a bit before the cops came. They actually let him go too. My dad's older brother came home from the war in Vietnam to find that his wife had been cheating on him with his best friend. He locked them both in the friend's house and burned it down with them in it. He held the firefighters off with a rifle until he was sure they couldn't be saved, then he shot himself. This was before I was born, but I've seen some newspaper clippings about it. My dad brought in a banana tree to the US from his home village in Kerala. He literally walked through customs with a tree and a pot in his arms. The customs lady asked him what he was thinking and he just replied that the banana tree was from his mother's garden. The customs lady must have thought my dad was crazy, but she just let him walk right through. We still have that tree and its offspring. My grandfather's cousin stabbed a waiter to death because he wouldn't let him use the employee's only restroom in his restaurant. One time my uncle put ranch dressing on a dry aged New York strip steak that cost $70. What is a wholesome animal fact you know? When they hear running water, beavers will automatically start to build a dam. We know this because people put a speaker playing sounds of running water next to beavers, and the first thing they did was start building a dam on the speaker. Vampire bats will share food with other vampire bats who haven't fed in the last day or two, their metabolism means they die if they don't eat roughly every three days. This helps support members of the colony, even though it puts the sharer at risk. It is considered one of the few forms of altruism observed in non-human animals. Zebras can't sleep alone which leads to my theory Marty spent like 80% of the Madagascar movies as a raging insomniac hence explaining his erratic personality at times. Mama cats can sense when their kittens are having nightmares, so they tightly pull them into a hug and lick their faces to aid them. Despite all the weirdness that is the platypus, they are still discovering weird things about it. Within the past two years it was discovered that platypus fur glows blue-green when exposed to ultraviolet light. Pigeons are not wild animals, they are feral. Every pigeon in your city is descended from escaped domesticated birds. You could catch and tame a pigeon just like any stray dog or cat. Dogs will sneeze to let you know that they are only playing and don't intend to hurt you while they are playing with them violently. What's a company secret you can share, because you don't work there anymore? So worked for ESPN for years. They used to charge people to be an insider, which gave you fantasy advice if you sent an email. Those experts were myself and other randoms here in Omaha, Nebraska, in a call center. No training just our opinions amow. Camera shop I worked in as a kid. Owner used to make an extra print of the nudes and kept them in a photo album he hid in the back of the shop. Thought it was funny as a 15 year old. Seems pretty fucked now. Pawn shop. If you pawn or sell your laptop, phone or camera delete nudes or personal pictures. I had a boss that would go through each device. This idiot would go through and try to show me pics like I gave a fuck. And he legally could because the customer signs a waiver. Delete your shit peeps. Tobacco companies would deliberately leave packs of cigarettes exposed at liquor stores where kids could steal them because a pack of packs stolen is a pack sold. They'll be back soon to buy a pack. When we put you on hold without music, we can hear you. In many of those website help chat apps, the agent can see what you're typing before you hit send. Found that out after the support answered the question I first typed out, but didn't send, before deleting it and asking a different question. Was a slightly awkward back and forth after that until they admitted they could see what I type even without sending. Married men of Reddit, what was that dumb thing you did during your dating phase that you can't believe your wife ended up overlooking? Flicked a dime at her head. We were playing table football. Not sure what I was thinking. She has a scar. I kiss it every night before we go to bed. We are married and have three kids. Insisted that everything in San Francisco was walking distance from everything else and decided we should walk from Pier 39 to Golden Gate Park. It is walkable, but not third date walkable, or whatever shoes she happened to be wearing that day walkable. My uncle didn't call his now wife for over a year after they first met and he got her number. He kept the paper she wrote it on and ended up finding it and calling her asking if she still remembered him and was still interested in going on a date. Accidentally set her hair on fire with a match while lighting a cigarette. Not good. We are still married 29 years later. I don't smoke anymore.
When I kneeled to propose I landed on a sharp rock and we had to go to the ER because it lodged in my kneecap. On our first dinner date, my husband ordered a shit ton of food to show me his favorites at an Indian restaurant, and forgot his wallet at home, and only discovered doing so when the check had arrived. Cleared me out well over a hundred bucks and he was absolutely mortified, but we've been married for near two years so. What's the most messed up slash inappropriate thing that someone's casually said to you? I was packing up files and my boss said I looked good on my knees. My boyfriend's grandfather said twice that he would rather like to see me in a bikini than normal clothes. For context, we just spent a family afternoon at the pool where I was wearing a bikini. My uncle during my closest cousin's funeral who died from an overdose told me, just tell me you did it. This will haunt you forever. People don't take me seriously because I'm pretty. You're so lucky not to have that problem. Had an ex who requested that I keep the push-up bra on during the fun times because my breasts were disappointing, like opening a bag of lace. Middle of a grocery store. I'm 18 or 19. A man 50 plus years old walks up to me, puts his arm around my shoulders, stares down at my breasts, and says, Damn, girl, can you see your feet? I was a server at Red Robin and a man in the bar said he'd leave his wife for me. He looked older than my grandpa. I like you a lot. But if we dated I'd end up cheating on you. What are some productive ways to let your anger out? Drumming. As a 30-year-old do-it-yourself punk drummer, use ear protection if you do this. Exercise is amazing for releasing anger. Also helps with mood elevation. Endurance running. My best runs were anger burns. Now that I am COVID flabby, house cleaning. Piss me off, and my place will be spotless the next day. Rage cleaning. Grab that fucking laundry basket and throw all your stupid clothes in it. Stomp all the way to the washer slash dryer. Furiously mop your goddamned floor. Get into your garden and lose it on the fucking weeds. I may have used this method before. It's a good way to use your angry energy to achieve a somewhat positive result. I find it helps if you mutter under your breath too. It very much depends on the person. Some people just need alone time, some people need distraction, some people need to climb a mountain and scream. Try them all out until one clicks. Full body workouts. Whenever I can't exercise or burn out the feelings, I write. Pour your heart out. And if you're worried that someone else may read it later, you can burn it to release the energy. What's a rule that was implemented somewhere, that massively backfired? My company has a strict no alcohol policy. You can't begin work within 10 hours of having had a drink. So whenever there's a staff shortage and they need me to come in right away, Guess who just cracked open a cold one? My work has an infraction system. If you're a minute late that's half a point, if you're up to four hours late that's half a point. So if you're going to be a minute late you might as well be four hours late because it's the same penalty. English law in Wales set the death penalty for stealing a sheep. Welshmen caught stealing sheep would claim to be making love to them. They would get a lesser penalty for bestiality. The consequence of this is they Welshmen gained a reputation as sheep shaggers. Alcohol bans at college football games has led to increased intoxication problems because fans are loading up before going in the stadium. Last summer in Sweden, bus drivers in some counties started wearing shorts due to the heat wave. After being denied to continue doing so by management, they started wearing skirts instead. Dress code policies got banned shorts, but not skirts. One of the high-rise blocks I have to maintain has a sign saying anything left here will be removed due to it being a fire risk. People just dump the shit there they don't want like fridges and sofas and by law we have to take it. Fuck me right. What's a subtle sign someone has been through some shit? The maturity with which they handle unexpected events. Especially at a young age. Not trusting people. You could be friends for years, and think you're close, but in fact, you don't have the slightest idea what's going on in their lives. They could be staying up all night, being depressed, and tomorrow morning say hello with a smile on their faces. They simply don't trust people anymore no matter what they do slash don't do. They have advice good advice for people who've just experienced trauma. Or for how to handle oddly specific and fucked up situations. Super independent because they learned not to rely on anybody. When nothing shocks them. Never asking for anything, even the bare minimum. Apologizing for things that aren't their fault even in the slightest. Never talking about their issues seriously, probably joking about it or even staying away from the topic completely flinching at small things. Preparation. Most people who've dealt with horrendous situations now prepare for the proverbial worst. Not wanting to bring up anything from their past. When shit goes down, they know what to do. 
What is lame when you're young, but cool when you're older? Putting half of your allowance in the piggy bank. Boring summer days when your parents were at work and you had nothing to do. I used to feel all bummed out on those days. Now, I live for the days where the house is clean, errands are done, and no one wants to hang out. Being yourself, even if that isn't what other people think is cool. Going to bed early. Talking to people of the opposite gender despite the possible contraction of cooties. Drinking water. Naps. Having fun, even embarrassing yourself to do so, in public. I remember being really young, like 11, and refusing to have normal kid fun because I thought it would look silly. Which looks the exact opposite. Who cares what you look like, have some fun before you die. Staying in on a weekend night. Relaxing at home and watching a movie is now my perfect Friday night. Getting those deodorant gift sets, when you're a kid you're so disappointed. But as an adult you're like fuck yeah, I don't have to buy those for a while now. What's something that gets an unnecessary amount of hate? Tom from Tom and Jerry. He just wants to chill while that little piece of shit annoys him all the time. That one spoon in your kitchen you hate for no reason. Bandwagon hating on something in general is a huge problem. I try to make a point to have a full explanation of why I dislike something before I go hating on it. Also, I am open to debate said dislike. The word moist. I'm just describing this nice cake I'm eating and you're acting like I'm reciting ancient curses from the satanic bible. Everything Reddit decides it doesn't like. Robert Pattinson. Sure, he got famous for the Twilight movies, and no, they're not very good, but all of the weird independent films he's made after that really scream that this poor guy just wants to be appreciated as an actor. Everyone. If you're a human being there is likely many reasons someone would want you dead and countless more why people would think you are a horrible person. Humanity in general needs to chill. Vegetables. I eat them regularly since I was a kid and it just blows my mind that there are people who take eating vegetables as punishment or they need to learn to like it or cook it because somehow they find it disgusting in raw state. I can't imagine not eating at least one kind of vegetable once a day. Doctors and nurses have read it would have been your why didn't you come in sooner? Moments? Had a patient brought in by her son who took care of her when she arrived to her unit I performed a skin assessment, took off her socks and found a fallen off gangrenous toe. Seems fake and I wish this was but it was by far the nastiest thing I've witnessed. Son said he had no idea when his mother's foot became that bad. No words. Elderly woman fell at home and broke both femurs. Son thought she just needed to rest so he carried her to her bed. She laid there in her own filth for three days before anyone called 911. The son lives with her. And there's family next door as well how? Why? Story from my son-in-law who is a nurse. Young man was brought into the emergency room. He had a sinus infection that he had let go to the point that it had eaten through the skull and into this brain. She was told that it had started several months before. He didn't want to go to the doctor for it. All it would have needed was 10 days of antibiotic pills. Instead, he was not brought in until he was unconscious, and died within a few hours. Maggots. Whenever it's gotten to the point of maggots it's like 100 alarm bells that this person's living situation is no bueno. What do you love doing, but hate succeeding in? Taking a long, nice nap, but then realizing you slept for 3 hours and won't be able to fall asleep tonight. Eating the entire pack of cookies. Work ethic. I like getting work done with time to spare. I hate that this puts me in a position of getting more work to do without any of the benefits. There is always a moment towards the end of a video game where you have to decide to finish the main mission, beat the final boss, and lose interest. Well, you did it. You got the blackhead. Your chin is a mess now. Happy? Reading books, especially good books for the first time. You're on a journey, have no idea where the end is. At some point it's over, and you know you'll never experience that book the same way again. There are the very rare books where knowing the end, or key bits of information, Make the second or third read just as good. Astronomer here. Some years ago, I was involved in a program that scanned the night sky searching for near-Earth asteroids that would hit the Earth someday. It was super fun, especially if you find an asteroid, but yeah you really don't want to find an asteroid on collision course that will kill us all. Or, do, you? What's the worst thing to say after a kiss? The worst thing a dude ever said to me after I used tongue, there's no food in there for you. Do you want a mint? You should probably get checked now. Ew. A real response because my dumb 14 year old self at the time when I had my his first kiss and said afterwards, do you have any chapstick your lips are really dry. So from experience, that. 
You kiss like my mom. Couldn't even tell I vomited earlier could you? You taste different when you're awake. What is that? Smacks lips slightly to savor the flavor, onion? What was your name again? Second best kiss ever. Trust me. That'll do, pig. That'll do. People who work at five-star hotels, what type of shit goes on that management doesn't want people to know. We don't want you to know that the people who stayed in the room before you were fucking nasty. Housekeeping gets the brunt of it. I've seen them carry out bags of used sex toys, peel used condoms off of every surface, and scrub shit, actual human, presumably, shit, off places there's no reason for human shit to be. The worst, though, was the couple that wanted a home birth but not, you know, at home, because gross. We had to deal with that hazmat situation. Fuck them as hard as we could with penalties and fees, though. A lot of lonely people going on vacation to end their life. Happens a lot but is never mentioned on the news. What goes on the room next to you? This week we to evict and have arrested a couple for causing over $15,000 in damages to a room. This was done quietly late at night and the nearby rooms never found out. Coke. Lots of coke. Didn't work at one, but delivered newspapers to one. The prostitution thing was something the desk saw a lot. The best one was when the gentleman got robbed by two young ladies and immediately demanded the front desk call the cops. When the desk asked if he wanted to call the cops and tell them he hired two hookers, illegal, he suddenly just grunted and marched up to his room. What are some cheat codes you've found in the game of life? Walk with a purpose. For some reason, people think you're busy and you don't get hassled. No one stops a guy or girl carrying a pizza. It can get you backstage to concerts. Take a $1 bill and flip it over. Now tape a $5 bill and tape it to the end of the upside down single with as little tape as possible to make it secure. Now feed the $5 bill into a change machine. The coin machine reads the 5, give you quarters, then reads the upside down single, rejects that, and boom, you got yourself a felony. I am an assistant teacher in a preschool. Asking if kids can use their sitting muscles and listening muscles during circle time makes the kids want to show me how strong they are. If you are punctual, smartly dressed, and quite friendly, you can actually get pretty far in most jobs without being that good at anything or trying very hard. When someone says something true, say you're right not I know. It'll make them feel better and you've still shown everyone how fully clever you are. If any website offers a percentage coupon code like 10% off try higher values like 20% off, they often have them. Yeah I'm going straight for 100% off and working my way down from there. Try 200% off and see if they'll actually pay you to take their product. What things should be kept private from your significant other, no matter how healthy your relationship is? Journals. My partner writes in one every night before bed and I have no idea what any of it says. If she wants to share with me she can. Those are her private thoughts and feelings until she decides differently. Same goes for me. My ex-wife used to interrogate me after every therapy session I had. My midnight snack stash. I don't have any, but I'll think I should have some. Even though my wife and I have been happily married for six years, we decided we would never go for a shit while the other is in the shower. We're just not going there. Your methamphetamine production business. Jesse, we need to cook. My steady supply of jokes. I set up my Android to send me a joke every night at 5 p.m. and I tell it to my husband later on, before I jump in the shower. He always asks where I'm getting this stuff from and I just laugh and shut the bathroom door I would like him to continue thinking of me as this endless joke fairy for the rest of our lives. How many Lego Death Stars I have bought? That I know you keep a secret stash of chocolate in the Tampax box. Not my business? That you know you're the pet's favorite person. What was a house rule you had as a kid that you thought was completely normal until you grew up and realized not all households followed? My mom used to pay me to be my own babysitter between the ages of 10 to 14 or so. The rule was that as long as I didn't make a mess and I'd put myself to bed by the time she got home then I got $10 in the morning. When I was really young I had a night-night bell. It was this old clay bell that hung in the kitchen, and when I had to go to bed I got to ring the bell and everyone would come say goodnight and then I would go to bed. Not really a rule, but a weird little ritual in our house. My family had a thing we called the food blanket. When we'd eat casual meals. We'd lay a blanket on the living room floor and eat on it, like a picnic. My parents didn't want to get any food on the carpet. Instead of set the table my mom would say, go lay out the blanket. 
I remember being really confused when I learned every family didn't have a food blanket. Maybe it's not a house rule. But when I was six my mom told me that if I behaved she would let me skip school on Saturdays and Sundays. One day my teacher said see you Monday and I knew. We weren't allowed to get into the fridge or the cabinets without asking permission. My family was very poor and we had a limited food budget, so eating something without permission very possibly meant eating one ingredient of a meal my stepmother was planning on cooking within the next few days. I went to friends' houses and they just ate whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. What is your I really want to know the answer but if I google this, I will be put on a list question. I can't type it here, I'll still be put on a list. How to kill someone, slow and painfully, with their own leaf blower. Because that's how I felt at 6 a.m. last Sunday morning. Chemicals that react explosive with urine. Urinal bombs my boys. How to not seem like a serial killer, with online dating. Most of the women I've talked to jokingly say that their fear is that I'm catfishing them or a serial killer. I can easily disprove being a catfish, but I don't know how to prove I'm not a serial killer. What does an average human body nutrition fact bar look like? I have googled and have yet to find an answer. What poisons are untraceable? How to resources for running an underground railroad in a repressive regime? What should the structure look like? How do you find like-minded people around the country you can trust? Does the fridge light turn off when you close your refrigerator? This motherfucker's make in lists. What consistently leaves you disappointed, but you just keep trying? Thinking my job will get better. Trying to keep in contact with my one-sided friendships. Trying to enjoy my free time like I used to. Growing indoor plants. Sunlight is less powerful than you think through a window. Water less than you think you need to. Dating. Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Don't forget Sunday night when you start stressing about going to work on Monday. Any competitive multiplayer video game with teammates. Ordering fries from home. They always arrive cold. Get an air fryer, they reheat fries back to perfection. Making non-awkward conversation with strangers. My job as a teacher. What should teenagers these days really start paying attention to as they're about to turn 18? You are now risking, real, jail time. Taking care of your physical and mental health before you fall into the trap of I don't have time for it. Really sit down and think about how you can better yourself for your own sake. Your data trail online. Old Instagram and Facebook posts can come back and haunt you during future interviews. Be social but remember friends will come and go. Don't invest in people that want to invest in you. Relationships. As soon as you hit 18 things start becoming real. Don't get married without being sure of your future spouse, don't go unprotected during sex, don't get into a relationship where your other half will get you in trouble with the law. Traffic rules. Please, take it the fuck seriously. Don't drive like a 12 year old playing GTA 5. Don't drive if you are drinking. Wear. Your. Fucking. Seatbelt. Learn how to take care of yourself. Take full responsibility for everything that is happening in your life. Create big goals and have a life purpose if you have one. Focus on saving money and don't buy stupid shit to impress people you don't even like. Smoking. Started with cigs so I could take breaks at work, construction, 22 now and can't quit vaping. Shit sucks. What's a massive scandal slash controversy that people seem to have forgotten about? Epstein's child trafficking clients were never released to the world. DuPont, still active company. When producing Teflon dump loads of bad chemicals into the water and Teflon was poisoning people all over the world giving them six known types of cancer. They covered it up for decades. Crazy how evil some companies are. Panama Papers. The shadiest of shady financial dealings that should have brought down powerful, rich people just got forgotten. I still feel like Equifax got off way too easy. People should have been arrested. That breach was a direct result of negligence. The BP oil spill. In like, 2015 I drove by a packed BP and told my buddy, wow BP is lucky everyone forgot, and he said, forgot what? In 2016 South Korea had a political scandal in which the President Park Geun-hye was exposed for being manipulated slash controlled by a cult called the Eight Goddesses Cabal. South Korea was literally being ruled by a cult, Park was impeached. Boy George. He was jailed for 15 months for imprisoning a Norwegian male escort after a nude photoshoot in what the judge called a premeditated, callous and humiliating assault. He basically tortured him. And now he hosts TV shows in Australia. 
That McDonald's Monopoly sweepstakes? None of the big prize winning pieces ever made it to stores. The guy in charge of randomly putting them on cups and cartons after production kept them and gave them to friends, splitting the winnings. For years. In the Philippines, the dictatorship and the extrajudicial killings as well as the corruption under the presidency of Ferdinand Marcos seem to be forgotten already. People here even elected his son as the president. What makes you nervous no matter how many times you do it? Walking over a storm drain with my keys in my hand. Using my table saw. Even though I am a carpenter. When my boss goes can we just have a quick chat? Let's break ourselves into small groups and. And also, before we start, let's go around the room and say a little bit about ourselves. Driving in between two semi-trucks on the freeway. Bonus points if one or both is carrying a bunch of logs. Drive in front of a police officer when I have no reason to be nervous. Walking out of a store without buying anything. Calling off work. Job interviews. Trying to mingle slash start conversations in social settings where I don't know anybody. Answering the door. Sometimes I just don't. Parents of Reddit, how do you feel when your kid brings back a girlfriend slash boyfriend? How do you decide whether you like them or not? My daughter just started dating. She was mortified when I picked them up and asked if everything was Gucci. I first met one of my kids' partners when they both joined us on a weekend away. We had a discussion on some general subject in which he disagreed with me. He defended his position rather than defer to me. Good chap. When they interact and help out the rest of the family. When my daughter didn't understand her homework and then her sister's boyfriend helped her it showed how much he actually cared. My four-year-old daughter introduced me to the five-year-old neighbor kid as a boyfriend. She told me he's really good at running fast and he appreciates snails as much as she does. Needless to say, this is a keeper. I said. Whatever you do to my daughter, I will do to you. I've been stuck giving him emotional support and validation for three years. That fucking bastard. My mother has always been accepting of everyone I've ever dated, but realistic about their faults. My family immediately welcomes them with open arms, but just warns me if they seem off for whatever reason. I think it's a decent system. What are some signs that you are being manipulated? Thinking to yourself, no he or she wouldn't be doing this on purpose to me one too many times. Manipulators often induce uncomfortable, negative feelings such as fear, guilt, or shame to get you to do what they want. Pay attention to the feelings you get around other people. Everything is always your fault. When you catch them in a lie and you know they've lied, but they still don't admit they've lied. You're being manipulated when the essential message is, be reasonable and do things my way. When you do what people want you to do, but they won't do what you want them to do. They use the threat of leaving a relationship to get their way. If someone is discouraging you from talking to or hanging out with your friends and family. If they do something that hurt you and you end up apologizing instead. Or, if you tell a person that you're uncomfortable with, say, certain types of jokes, but they keep telling you that you're just too sensitive. Basically if they make you feel bad for their actions. What is the most unmoanable name you can think of? A friend told me their dad's name is Plunkett. Who if looks at their beautiful newborn baby boy and thinks Plunkett. It's perfect. X A 12. Quintard. I saw it on a doctor's diploma the other day and just swelled with pity for him. Gertrude. I literally read the question, answered out loud Gertrude then clicked, and here you are. Er yeah. That's a traditional Finnish name, which means vomit in spoken Finnish. Am I the only one moaning all of these names as I scroll through? Ironically, Myrtle is pretty unmoanable. Sheldon. I scrolled down entirely too long to find this one. Give it to me. Sheldon. Ride me big. Sheldon. Beetlejuice. Not because you physically couldn't, but because you could only do it twice. I imagine everyone entering this thread has done a quick search to make sure their name is not listed anywhere, right? Karen. Cause it's my mother's name. If you had the ability to add a feature to the human body, what would it be? A diagnostic interface that tells you what's wrong with you. Regeneration, ability to regenerate any lost organs or body parts. Tumors are forever. An organ to filter salt water into drinkable water. Fast charge. So we'll only ever need one to two hours of sleep. A user interface that shows all information you want about your body, like hormone level or if you have an internal injury. Regenerating teeth. Reinforced knees. 
the ability to zoom in with your eyes. Voluntary ovulation. Don't feel like incubating unfertilized egg in your uterus and then ejecting it in a bloody bath this month? Then just fucking don't release the goddamn egg from your ovary in the first place. I really hope that devs finally patch the glitch where you open the fridge and don't remember why you are there or what you're looking for. Built-in translator from slash to any language. You've been granted the power to bless people with minor conveniences. How do you make their lives slightly better? The TV remote is exactly where they expect it to be. Allow a person's deodorant to work longer and better than initially anticipated. They always have that forgotten dollar in their back pocket. You never forget any login names or passwords when needed. But they are also unique and unhackable. Goes to sleep two minutes after hitting the pillow. Chargers always work no matter the position you hold them. They can shake out the exact number of pills you need from the bottle every time. Your car will always park perfectly between the lines on the first try. Auto adjust balls. Their socks won't ever slide down in their shoes. Clean poops that leave nothing behind, no toilet paper needed. Whenever they have a doubt and need to double check if they locked the door or shut the stove off, it's done and they remember they did it. They suddenly remember the name of that one actor they were trying to think of during a conversation the other day. Any two socks they pull out of the laundry basket will match. What's a sign that somebody wasn't raised right? They don't take responsibility for their actions. You give them a lift and they leave rubbish in your car. How they treat people from whom they have nothing to gain. The word no just means throw a fit and be as obnoxious as you can be until you get your way. No does not mean that rules are rules or someone's job might be on the line, they're the important one, not anyone else. If they make messes in public areas and just wander off, leaving trash in the theater, not flushing, leaving the cart in a parking space. Disrespecting people for doing their job. Lack of personal accountability. They can never admit wrongdoing on their part. It's always someone else's fault. Not respecting personal boundaries. If you're wondering why someone has these sorts of issues, take a look at their parents. One rule for me one rule for you parents that mess up on the discipline slash accountability stage of parenting produce these people. Who are the guys who spit out their chewing gum into urinals? I see this all the time at work and I work in a high-end corporate place. Do they think it dissolves and goes down the pipe? The janitor has to pick that out. How they act as a boss when their employee messes up. Yelling and belittling shouldn't be your first option. What do people complain about like it's everywhere constantly but is actually rather rare? People giving away free drugs. The frequency of dangerous Australian animals. Like yes they are there but not really at the same time. People complaining about people complaining about something, but it's just one guy on Twitter. Or someone they entirely made up. Your souffle not holding up, I always thought that this was gonna be an actual problem as an adult. Still have yet to make a single souffle at 33. 10 years old me thinking we'd need to know how to stop drop and roll a lot more in life. People giving out edible pot for Halloween. Can guarantee that no stoner is gonna give those away for free. Old cartoons be like, quicksand. And marching ants that remove all the food from your picnic. The danger of the Bermuda Triangle. I honestly thought it would be a regular threat in my adult life when they kept talking about it while I was young. Being from Florida, the amount of people that think I have to fight off gators daily. LOL. Women of Reddit, what is the grossest thing a man has said to you? My male coworker told me that sometimes the drainage system to the shellfish slash meat freezers at his old workplace would clog up with old fish juice runoff and he would have to fix it by sucking on the drain tube to get it flowing again. And that sometimes he would get old fish slash meat slash cooler juice in his mouth doing so. I almost puked hearing that. Girls like you get raped said to me and cousin when we were 11 and 15 years old. We were playing with a huge chess set in the town square and he was watching us. He had been sitting mumbling and staring before this loud declaration. We called my dad to come get us after he continued talking loudly about us to himself. According to my dad he was harmless but not mentally well. I was working at a hardware store and helping a guy when a female co-worker walked by. He said, I would eat a yard of her shit just to lick the bowl. I will probably never forget that. I wore a smaller size of my uniform top to school once because my normal one was stained with coffee. A guy classmate walked up to me and said I bet you'll love when I rip it off you and rape you won't you. I reported him to the teacher and wore hoodies for the rest of the school years. He got suspended and had to apologize in front of the whole cohort and he never approached me again. Men of Reddit, 
What are some immediate red flags in men that women should look out for? This is one most women learn themselves around high school but still worth mentioning now. If he's an asshole to everyone but you, that doesn't mean he thinks you're special. It means he is an asshole but knows how to not be an asshole in order to get laid. Avoid people who are very polite and charming when they want something from those above them, but are arrogant and demanding when they think they can take something from those below them. People who smile up and kick down are the worst. Lack of respect for boundaries. Emotional manipulation, trying to guilt trap you. Refusing to admit that they could possibly be wrong. I have seen many men get super frustrated and aggressive over the idea that they could be possibly wrong about something. To add on to this, many of these same men when presented with the proof of them being wrong they will either deflect or make it seem like it doesn't matter and that you are making such a big deal about this. We are all humans and we all make mistakes. I feel for many of these men they feel stupid and less manly if they are wrong about something. Being able to accept your mistakes and move on is a healthy trait. Only talks about themselves. What's something that would be 100% better if it was slightly shorter? Average work hours. Unskippable ads on YouTube. Lines at any amusement park. My nose hair. My doctor's fingers. Kevin Hart. He would have so much more material. Technically, he'd have less material. A full-term pregnancy. Acceptable height for being called tall. Me. I hate hitting my knees on the seat in front when using public transport. What's an unusual body feature of yours? I have a bifurcated uvula. That teardrop thing in the back of your throat? Mine is shaped like a butt. Or a little nutsack. Ever since my brain surgery to remove a tumor I can't feel any temperature. One of my ribs is not connected to my spine. I have two different ears. One is wide enough for earbuds, the other isn't. My twin brother has the mismatch on the opposite side. Sounds like you guys traded an ear in the womb. Two uteruses and two cervixes, also known as, uterus didelphus. I have to wear socks at all times, otherwise my feet start sweating, which makes my hands sweat for some reason. Having sweaty feet is annoying, but sweaty hands are the worst. I have four nipples. Much like people can suck in air to burp when they want, I can do that from the other hole and fart when I want. I have a small patch of perfectly wide hair just above my cooch. On one of the rare occasions when I let it run wild and free, a partner described my downstairs as looking like a badger doing a handstand. At some point I got a sneeze when I'm very hungry. Yes. I also get hunger sneezes. Nobody believes me. When was the moment you realized that your friends are assholes? When I started hanging out with better people. When they robbed me at gunpoint. That'll do it. I let my friend borrow my PS2 when I went to boot camp. When I came back. He said he sold it and gave me $50 I think. This was in 2006. Just one, when he propositioned my girlfriend to have sex with him under the guise of making sure she was being faithful to me. When he does shit to me and acts like it's no big deal, then I do the same back and he gets offended. When I made new friends and realized that it's not normal for friends to constantly beat on me and make fun of me. A friend never had much money but that was okay. Gave him a lift home from a hospital appointment. About 40 miles, no problem. Came a time I needed a lift home from A&D, maybe 5 miles, he asked for petrol money. A dim little light came on. When they stopped being my friends after I went through a rough financial patch. What do you think would be the worst death imaginable? Those people that die getting stuck while exploring caves. Definitely cartel type. Those guys know how to administer the most horrific types of torture. Radiation poisoning. I want to believe anything that slowly kills you painfully to be the worst. Such as slowly being crushed or something where the pain is beyond compare and yet not enough to throw you into shock or unconsciousness. So, life? The more I hear about cavers that get stuck, the more I think that's a shit way to go. For me? Being trapped in a small tube or cave, like the ones you have to wiggle through, and getting stuck to where you can't move your arms, and all you can do is wait to die. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Go into a coma in your late 20s and wake up at 90 years old before your death by natural causes. Burned alive, skinned alive, starved to death, I don't know. Any slow painful death. Being crucified sucks a lot too. Girls, what's the downside of being a female? Having to go to the secret cult meetings every month. Y'all saying periods, what about the period shits? Correct me if I'm wrong, but even if you get no cramps the poops I get during makes me feel unworthy of love. A lot of women would find this as lucky but, 
I get my period for one to two days every month. It hurts so bad. I showed my sister one of my bloody pads and she said maybe you're having a miscarriage. I don't find males being able to pee standing fair at all. Like when camping outdoors, shit sucks. Boobs in the summer in the south. The complications that come with a vagina. Bacterial vaginosis again? UTI? Yeast infection from the UTI antibiotics? BV came back cause of the yeast infection that you got treating your UTI? Such a pain sometimes. Having to go to the gynecologist. I literally get lightheaded every time I think of it. Depends on where you live. Some women have essentially no rights. The idea that women are just some spin-off of men. Example, only recently has it become more common knowledge that women experience heart attacks differently than men, because men's bodies and experiences have just always been considered the default. Men of Reddit, physical appearance aside, what do you find attractive in a woman? Intelligence, sense of humor and character. Having a hobby or genuine interests. If you have something to talk about, especially something I know very little about and you're passionate enough about to share it with me it's very alluring. Even more so if it's an activity that can be done together. Mannerisms. My wife is attractive, but it's her sense of humor and the way her face moves when she's being silly that I find myself missing so much when I'm at work. Silly, funny, witty women will inherit the earth. A sense of humor. If she makes me laugh, I'm hers. A really lively personality, it's hard to describe, but some people just give off this vibe. Surprised not to have spotted this here already, showing interest. Most men are so affection starved, and society is constantly putting pressure on for men to make the first move. Whether a woman is the hottest in the room, or far below average, if she makes it clear she is interested in vo, i.e. blatant flirtation, she suddenly jumps in attractiveness by an order of magnitude. And let's be honest, most men are not good at seeing the signs, so if it's not blatant, we will easily misinterpret. Just being honest and not having assumptions. What's something boys can never tell their girlfriends? I actually watched this episode without you when you passed out last night. That you wouldn't date her if she was a worm. I just know this is going to be on a TikTok with Minecraft gameplay or subway surfers in the background with shitty lo-fi music. They'll put this comment in for the meta joke of it and use it to farm comments about how funny it was to put this one in there. Same with this one. How much I actually spend on my hobbies. The real answer to the question what are you thinking about when he dozed off again. What I'm really thinking about since you would never believe me if I said I was thinking about how bike tires are made. I want my hoodie back. I need space from her sometimes and it's not because she did something wrong. Calm down. The guy she tells us not to worry about really worries us. What's something that's clearly overpriced yet people still buy? Printer ink. Two years ago I bought a color laser printer instead. Around 750 pages later my starter black toner is about half, and the colors are about a third gone. Well worth the high price tag to replace the toners. Diamonds. Close. I was at a factory in Bangladesh once where they were making products for a well-known brand. The factory owner handed me a top and said take it, it'll be worth loads by the time you get home. Sure enough, when I got home, the same design top was being sold for about pound 60 pound 70. It cost them about a quid to manufacture. College textbooks. I am very proud of the fact that I have never assigned a mandatory textbook, third year teaching college. Funerals, give my body to science and take a vacation instead. Bottled water. Especially, the health fad bottled water like alkaline water or smart water. Flowers on Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. I agree with you. My mother, however, would like a word. Right now? Cars, at least in my area. Brand new cars are few and far between. And it's not unusual to see used cars with prices 10k to 12k above what the price was a year and a half ago. It's insane. Graphics cards. The recent state of the GPU market has shown me how people don't give a fuck about parting ways with their money lol. For the few that have actually read any terms and conditions, what sneaky things have you found? Thank you customer for actually reading our terms and conditions. Send us an email with the following content and we will send you a free box of chocolates. They did indeed send chocolate. Control plus F reading on every terms and conditions now. Or other keywords. I don't know if this is super surprising but I read the entire lease for my first apartment and apparently, I couldn't get out of my lease even if I died. In the hiring contract for the last company I worked for, 
There was a line buried on page like 22 that said if you email a certain email address on your first day saying you saw the line, you'd get a bonus day of PTO for the year. Sony can sue you for literally not updating your console software if you're connected to internet. GameStation once made an immortal soul clause on April Fool's Day, to prove that no one actually reads the terms and conditions. It read, By placing an order via this website on the first day of the fourth month of the year 2010 Anno Domini, you agree to grant us a non-transferable option to claim, for now and forevermore, your immortal soul. What is the most important lesson learned from COVID-19? You can have all the free time in the world and still manage to do nothing with it. If there was ever a zombie attack, people would definitely lie about being bit. Non-essential jobs pay a lot more than essential ones. That 50% of jobs can be done from home while the other 50% deserve more than they're being paid. The supply chain is far leaner and vulnerable to the vagaries of pandemic conditions than most had thought. People are dumb as fuck. What's that old saying? We're all just three meals away from total chaos? I've been thinking about that adage a lot the past few years. I like people not being near me. We need to teach statistics and critical thinking better. How comfortable I seriously am with just myself. Just because they're voted officials, it's clear they aren't the smartest, nor do they have your best interest in mind. If your plan relies on everyone working together, it is doomed to fail. Most schools weren't as ready to switch to digital methods as they brag about. What is the most important lesson learned from COVID-19? Apparently, toilet paper is more valuable than anything. You should take the time to spend with those you love. Regardless of the nature of the crisis, the rich get richer and we get fucked. Bold of you to assume we've learned anything. People are shittier than I expected. That it wouldn't take much for civilized people to turn on each other. Alcohol doesn't improve my life it just feels good for a moment. Nine months sober. If in a really dangerous situation that requires unity, we're fucked. People make irrational decisions when afraid. When the shit really hits the fan, we're fucked. There are me people and there are we people. You're on a death row, you have one hour left, they ask for your final meal, what is it? Eight pounds of uncooked popcorn kernels. The electric chair is gonna be awesome. A huge bowl of baked beans, a bowl of shredded wheat, a six egg omelet, and a gallon of apple cider. I'm gonna make it awful for everyone. McFlurry. Those machine are always broken. I just bought myself some time. I want a nice filet mignon, medium rare, a baked potato with everything on it, and a nice cabernet from a good year, I'm thinking 2135. There is no way in hell I would be able to eat. Three week aged steak that just started being aged today. 150 milligrams of MDMA. I'm dying happy. Something badly cooked so I will be sick and want to die sooner and have diarrhea so bad it will be a last revenge. Taco Bell it is. Olive Garden. Unlimited soup and breadsticks. Peking Duck. You always have to order it 24 hours in advance, so I'll get an extra day. Almost 80% of the ocean hasn't been discovered. What are you most likely to find there? Water, mostly? Weird ugly ass fish. Cities of academic fish pondering what they'll find on the 80% of land they haven't explored. I imagine there is some kind of absolutely huge lobster down there. Deep sea gigantism is a thing, giant isopods, squid, spider crabs are all far larger than their relatives that live closer to the surface. There's also the fact that lobsters never stop growing until they die and do not suffer negative effects of aging. Basically, I just wanted to talk about lobsters for a minute. Did you know lobsters have at least two penises? Did you know lobsters attract mates by pissing out of their eyes? Lobsters are fucking cool as shit. A lot of people killed by the mob. 80% of what we have discovered down there are creatures straight out of a horror story, so it's likely we'll discover something even more horrifying.